Hello, hello, this is Arcades, and welcome to another build episode here on Stormworks Build and Rescue. We're going to be focusing here on my uh, career oil rig build that I'm doing, except we're going to be focusing on this right here. That little 6x6 frustration, the microcontroller that holds up all the logic that's going to run this. Okay, so quick rough draft okay so when i built the thing i originally did not fully intend it to be a automated system but and i was expecting to run it but i wanted to be able to drill automatically so i started building that and i went from there i'm gonna go over the bunch of the logic i have over on my twitch channel as arcades test over on twitch uh i have highlights for Four, three four-hour sections of me working on the logic. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be bringing some of them to this video at this point of me making this video. So if it's later in the video, hey, it's there. Uh, so here is the here's the deal. I had some challenges to overcome. First, we have to get the rod to grab a... Or we have to get the... Uh, that swivel head to move back and forth, grab a rod, have the system recognize that the rod has been grabbed, bring it over here, put it into place, then have this grab onto the thing, and then as soon as that, then it recognizes it has it let go, this recognizes, then the system has to recognize, I've got a rod here. <laughs> That will then move out of the way, that'll flip up, and start the prog attached to the rod, and start pushing downwards. That's just for the first rod. And then we gotta cycle that loop again where that goes back, grabs the rod, gets ready and waits. When this clears, pushes it down all the way, gets back up, out of the way, so this can put the next rod in place, and then this thing will automatically connect it together. And the whole time, it just cycles that. Grab a rod, hook it up, push it down. Grab a rod, hook it up, push it down. And just cycle through that. Now, I have gotten that completed. Everything is on this microcontroller. As you can see, I've got a lot of tooltip info <laughs> to, that helped me debug it throughout the thing. We've also got this. This moves this rack in progression to get the next thing. As you can see, it's just sitting here waiting. Now, there is one small caveat to the system. As you notice, it's sitting here. You're like, why doesn't it do anything? Because the first bit of logic I decided to... Anyways, that I decided to just say, you know what? It's a good way to keep a measure to say when I want to start it. It's the first rod has to be actually let go manually from here. After that, the system takes over and it's completely automatic. So let's show a cycle. And uh, yeah, this should be, uh, should be interesting. Whoops. So the connector thing down here was set to grab it. So as soon as it fell down and went through the thing, it was going to connect up. As you can see, the rod's going down. Uh, I think we're missing the pumps. Uh, this is great. Great moment, right? Right. <laughs> oh, no, the pumps are good. Whoops. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm missing the important thing. Okay, that's spinning up. And we have slurry moving through, so... Uh, hold on. Apparently there was a, uh, okay.
Okay, so after some technical difficulties, I got them sorted out. Okay, so <laughs> now, um, so let's try this again. <clears throat> so to get it started, I have to hit this button that releases this and it starts the entire cycle. So now it's going to attach at the top. It's going to push it down. Is we have this down here. And you'll see it's going straight through. This was kind of the difficulty I had to fix. Um, and as you can see, it's starting the process to rotate around. I'm not sure why it does that, but you know. So as you can see, everything does what it's supposed to. That's connected, now it's hooking up. As you can hear, it's digging right now. Or at least it's trying to. Now we're just going to go ahead and activate the table. When you hear that grinding noise, says it. And as you see, it's going to work through the system. And, uh, yeah. So let's, uh, let's enjoy the show a bit, and you will get to see a, uh, full cycle. And there you go. That's pretty much a full cycle. That's how it works. As you saw, it drilled down. We ended up getting, <clears throat> came back, it grabbed the rod, brought it over, and you saw it connected up there. I made it so that it would just line up in place. Now, you're probably seeing this and saw it light up when this came down here. This, even though there's the alignment status, I wanted this to only allow it to happen once it got to a certain point physically because I was having issues with disconnection and such and uh, so I had to add this contact sensor so the physical movement of this would allow it to uh, describe hey it's in the way it's out of the way you can do this you can't do this it's not much actually it's not like a huge deal it just says hey the thing's still here it's in place let's go ahead and do what we need to do now you saw there was a, I had to add a few delay things in there so that it didn't just rush through it. Okay, ah, uh, you know what? We're gonna let this have some fun. Let's go actually over to one of the build spots and take a look at it. I did it here because I actually wanted to hear the, the crunching so you can see it's successfully working. And as you can see right here, I've also got all this running right now. And you can see they got various values. I did identify a problem with the system, and I'm going to have to deal with that at some point, but for right now, uh, it is what it is. So, it will work until the water runs out, and then there's an issue that pops up that we'll have to deal with. So, uh, yeah, alright, give me a moment, and uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at the microcontroller itself. Okay, so we're here at the actual build site now, where I've been building it, as you can see with all the strewn rods from failed attempts to do stuff with them. <laughs> it was mainly from that rack. That one was the pain in the ass, but we're not talking about that yet. Okay, so actually, I got up there for no reason. Let's get into here. Take a look at this. Now, the main thing is, when you're developing a microcontroller, any structure, or any vehicle, or anything, you have to have a plan. You gotta know what you want it to do, how you want to accomplish that to a certain degree, and what you got to think about what you're going to need like what you want it to do what's your goals how you think you're going to do that and then try to keep options in mind in case your initial plan doesn't work where what's flexible okay so when i came into this i originally put down pretty much a flat six by six, by six controller uh blank microcontroller and just started from there <clears throat> now as you can see under the first thing is we got the logic here. I went and added 
every single possible input throw a red button that I would need. So I have all the clamp, I had all the clamps, I had, you know, such as, you know, the rod transfer, the transfer rod swivel, all the controls for that. I had the drill head controls. As you can see, I had them mapped out. Uh, we have the, uh, the slider controls, the linear track controls, swivel head positive, swivel head negative. And then there's also the connector the rod connector down there we have all their inputs we have all the control inputs we have all the status outputs all coming in this micro controller for every single piece that i could fit in here i fit it in here as best i could we even have the numbers for the uh, you know for the positioning of different various things as you can see i have some composite on here when i originally started it i didn't have composite because i wasn't sure what i was going to do if i was even going to have a composite setup if i was just going to have buttons that i would just be hitting to start stuff. I knew I wanted to have an ability to go manual, but I also wanted the ability to do, or I mean automatic, but I also wanted the ability to go manual. So I add, that's why I added all these inputs for manual buttons so that even when I have it in auto mode, I can shut it off and then operate the rig manually through, <laughs> ooh, excuse me, through button press. And eventually as I got near the end of the last session, I was able to figure out what I could cut out and all the status outputs that I had because I had I had a number of these uh, that were actually like the clamp status is it clamped well I figured you know what I can just since I don't need those as an output I do need those as an input so the thing can actually read it and decide hey what do I need to do next in my loop and with those statuses, it needs that. However, it does not need the output to send out to something else. Because it can those those outputs, if it's just regular lights or whatever, they can they can just use from straight from the part uh, that's delivering them to this anyways. And on top of that, I have a composite output on this, so I can take that information and transfer it to instrument panels, which I do have available and already planned out. So the first thing I had to do was, let's get in, so after I got all that put out, laid in, all the basic stuff at the start, <laughs> welcome to the mess. That's all I can just call it. It's just a mess. It, 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 it's a mess. <laughs> I can't even take you through the history of this. It's just that bad of a mess right now. All I know is I started off here to the left and just slowly worked my way to the right and downwards so and each area is just a region and I what I had originally was just straight on like alternates and then I just took piece by piece finding a way to manage a part based on values and put them together so for example like I've got a constant value here these right here these are the values for the slider where I want it position at and as you can see, there's two different values, six and one and negative one. The slider goes from negative one for the um, for the transfer rod that takes it and moves the rod from one side to the other. So the drill head can, you know, hook on and push it down after it's been connected. That one ends up, it, it says, hey, you're at this state. Oh, this clamp is hooked on. Okay, well, we're going to take this numerical switch box and say, hey, instead of saying the position needs to go in is this one, we're going to switch it to here. So that moves it out of the way. Technically, I could have had it gone all the way back for the constant, and they would have put it in position for the next rod, but I kind of wanted to... It lets me know. So if something goes wrong, the position of the slider tells me at what state it's in. Again, this is something I'm designing, so this is something I figure out. <laughs> so the next thing was after figuring out how to get the rod to transfer back and forth and pick or the rod transfer swivel head to go back and forth and know its position, then I actually had to get it to grab a rod, which wasn't that hard, thankfully. And then I had to figure out how to get it to the other side and let go of it. Now here's where I came in with my issue and I had to make this decision. The first rod, it had no idea to know if it was in the right place or not. And I'm sure I probably could have figured something out, but it was gonna take a lot more than I wanted to spend in. I'm going to be there telling it when to start and stop. So why not just put this as a thing, just put a 
let the auto load up, boot into position, and then say, then I can go, then I can hit the, basically the button to release it, and it says, okay, you're clear to run. And that's what's going to happen. So, uh, let's see if I can find it at. Because I have an overwrite. I call it the overwrite, manual overwrite. So it'll let go. Oh, yeah, see, here it is. <laughs> Transfer rod release mainly for first rod. I have an input specifically written in for that. And from there, it will unlock the thing. And as you can see, I used a lot of ore blocks. One side of the ore block is saying the manual mode. The other side of the ore block is the automation mode. Uh, and I had to solve a lot of little problems like that. And going from each step to step. And to finally, I think the one that threw me for the biggest loop was I think was trying to get the swivel head, you know, the, uh, the, the, the drill swivel head to not compete with the positioning. It kept reading the positioning of the transfer swivel head rod, uh, transfer, the swivel head, the swivel head that was meant for transferring rods, it kept competing for each other. Like, it wouldn't work because the thing was in a certain position. So I had to go in, I had to go and refine, you know, a few of the numbers and such to get it to work. Uh, and the funny thing is, I actually ended up rushing, learning how, forcing myself to learn how these function booleans work. And created, like, little processes for them. I was actually make larger ore blocks out of these things, basically. And it allowed me to add the composites to set up. But, yeah. And the main thing, I guess, for all of this, out of this entire mess, it was a learning experience. I managed to figure out some new logic stuff uh, that even me, as many hours I've gotten this game, I, you know, it's like, hey. The big thing was I, I finally figured out how to basically use, you know, these things and write out the equations in there. And realize it's not as bad as it looks. A lot of the logic in this game looks a lot worse than it actually is. But it does take time to learn, so. Uh, and as you can see, I got everything in. My biggest method when it comes to trying to fix this stuff, or, you know, set this stuff, is find a solution and work back from the solution to how to get that solution to work. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but it's easier to say, this is what I want, how do I want to get that work? And then you go forward, you wait till you find a problem, a kink in there, and you find, okay, how do I get this to work between here and here? Uh, my biggest, the biggest help I had with solving issues and if you get to developing a microcontroller too for whatever thing you want is to use the tooltips to use the tooltips because they are the biggest and best way for you to gain information about what's going on inside the microcontroller while you're out in the game world so you can test it as it's running whoops so if I set this in here, here, well, this isn't everything. This was all the stuff I needed to look at to make sure it was working. And as you can see, you'll see stuff changing on this as it's running. And right now it's probably waiting for me to drop a rod. Yeah. So I hit that. Get it started. And here you will see everything running. You will see all this stuff switching back and forth. And stuff, these tool tips make solving stuff so so helpful because you can actually see what's going on at what point in the operation and what's could possibly breaking now obviously you need to name tooltips and use them right but yeah okay so i mean that was pretty much the microcontroller the only other big microcontroller was this thing which you see the tooltips i had issues this one i did off stream this is not in any of the videos i did this off stream because i thought it was going to be a little bit simpler it turned out to be a pain in the ass. But I ended up just trying to get to feed these. Now the thing is, is this has also got to talk to this system. 
Actually, it's not even talking to this system. Well, it is. It is and isn't. It's, it says one thing. It says, I'm loaded. Basically, what that means is, is that in this position, that is zero. As you notice, it's just feeding rods right now. Uh, that it considers uh, the pickup position. There's a thing that says, tells it, hey, are you loaded or are you not loaded? Because the only status that this has is whether it is loaded or loaded. Now, there was two ways I ended up I could have, I was trying to handle this. I was using electrical connectors at first, and I was going to use the rod status along with a um, not block so that it would, when it's not loaded, the not block would take that signal, twist it around, and say, hey, I'm not loaded, and it would disconnect the connector. So while it was loaded, it would act, let the connector activate. But the problem is it was pulling it all over the place. They were too violent, so I had to give up on that. And ended up um, settling, basically giving all of these their own input. Uh... uh okay, so... Each one of these are numbered from 1 to 28, I think it was. Yeah, I think it's 1 to 28. And I had to make sure these were all put in their appropriate slot. <laughs> oh, God. And what it ends up doing is, like I said, all it does is says, hey, this one is loaded. And how I manage to achieve that is I have a this microcontroller right here controls not that one never mind this one this one controls the counting of up and down it has a counter on the inside and then I have a few other controls it controls the slider overall but the thing is it receives info from this one about the state of what's going on inside what I ended up doing. is I basically created this large ass input, assigned each of these inputs to each of those inputs. And what would happen is this controller would receive an input from the other one about what counter it's supposed to be on. So slot info, as you can see, and changes this channel uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. It changes that info from this channel, so it reads the number, number from this. The number comes out here and says, hey, variable from node, we're going to read from, say, channel 5, because we're on counter 5. So it goes here, looks at 5, and says, hey, I have a rod in me, or I don't have a rod in me. So that way, it, it always asks for which one it is. And you see, I got the tooltip, tooltip numerical value. So I can see what this is reading and uh, yeah and then it goes from there and that's just all the only thing this is is just to tell the big microcontroller says hey there's a rod ready come get it literally that that's that's all it, that's all it does okay so um and then I just laid down a bunch of the stuff that I'm planning to put in as controls uh, for the for the system in the control room. And that's where, you know, all these instrument panels come from, those gauges right there. I have, these are gonna be the manual controls. These are actually gonna be more like up against the uh, structure. Say like this, these three will go right here because they're for that arm. Uh, this is for the swivel head, so that might be going on the backside there. Uh, same thing with those, since the red, orange has to deal with this. You can see, I like to use color coding, and these involve the clamp to that. I think I readjusted that, because I'm using um, this PID to control the RPS of this, which, by the way, <laughs> three medium motors, about what you want, straight up. And I actually think that just doing three straight medium motors is a lot better than trying to gear them. 
Can't really explain why, that's just how I felt, and that's how I'm going. Uh, or one large. One large is more than enough to get you what you need out of this. Okay, uh, is there anything else that I have missed? Right now, that's pretty much as far as I've gotten. I also got the auto control to activate the pumps for all this, but yeah, not, not much else. Uh, that's pretty much all the logic work I did in a nutshell. It is about as rough overview as I can give you about what has happened and what has gone through. Uh, I did notice a problem with my initial test unit that I had back there uh, that I first started the video with. And I'm going to have to go through that again and I'm going to have to create a problem. And basically it got back to like the water ran out so the slurry got caught in the system. And it could be as simple as just getting to where I can add new slurry into new water into the system. Because apparently the slurry, uh, the saturated slurry jammed up all these so the slurry that's in the tank couldn't get through. Hey, that's what testing's for. So we're going to have to find out that solution. Uh, as of this video, the next session of Swarm Arcs I'm going to do is I'm going to be working more on this. And I'm probably going to be working over those more practical mechanical solutions definitely and uh yeah and hopefully start actually building some structure to this thing so that's going to be exciting yeah <laughs> let me try to play it up in a cheesy way of yeah it's going to get bigger and better anyways so i hope you had a good time i hope you enjoyed what you watch hope you get a uh hope uh the overview was enough to see tell you what's going on and where it's going like I said, I had 12 hours of streaming footage that was literally nothing but staring in a microcontroller. And I didn't want to try to make videos out of that alone. Because it was either just going to be massive speed build videos or they were just probably that. <laughs> That's it. Like I even thought about doing hour long super cuts of nothing but speed builds, but you wouldn't know what's going on. And at, yeah, in the end of the day, I decided just doing an overview of the logic. Because that was the thing I worked on the most. So, uh, like I said, next session on stream should be over on as Arcadis Twit. Arcadis Twit. What? Uh, uh, as Arcadis Test over on Twitch. <laughs> uh, hope you can join me there uh, on my next session. We're gonna like to put the structure, start put on some of the structures, maybe solve a few mechanical issues that I've seen so far. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed what you watch. Hope you liked what you saw. If you do, you know, like, subscribe, all that fun junk. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think so far. And uh, yeah, uh, this is Arcades signing out. Have yourself a good day. Oh boy.